So uh, the uh, horizontal axis is the uh, mass. Uh, the vertical one is the so-called what we call HT, or the sum of all the transfer energy. Uh, in this case, one can tell uh, the signal from the background. Like, uh, for example, the dominant background is definitely top. So it looks like this kind of like a Nike shape or wiggle here. And the signal should go to the uh, right-hand side, top one, heavier, and in any case. So, and uh, unfortunately, our data just look like the top. So you can see this is data, and they look somewhat similar. So uh, this is a rather complicated one. So, so that, since we need to do things in two dimensions, so what we do here is like uh, we make a, a chops of uh, like in the grid of this uh, two-dimensional space, and uh, not uh, reorder all the things according to the single noise uh, ratios or something, and uh, try to join them together. So this means we can put all the signal on one side, big one on the other side, and then make a sim simple one-dimensional effect to the final distribution. So uh, based on this uh, final one-dimensional effect, we can already set a very good limit. But however, we can also look at numbers. Like uh, in a total uh, total number event we found in these two channels, electron channel and the muon channel, they are all similar to what we expected from the background. So uh, this means we don't see strong hint of signal. So this gives us a limit like a 500 CD GeV, and uh, the result already published in POV. So this is a so-called T prime series. And uh, let me move to the other one, it's a heavier button with the B prime, which should give us a rather complicated or complex decay chain like this. One have a B prime, and the B prime decay to top and the W, and top is decay to B and W, so it becomes four W plus two BJ. So we can line up the uh, different combinations of um, uh, either W decay to left on neutrino or two quark. In this case, one can line up how many uh, combinations we can have. For example, from uh, four lepton plus two jets, it's uh, probably the most convenient one to a tangent, which is pretty dirty. And the, in this first analysis, we did with uh, taking the canonical version, like uh, two leptons and three leptons. Four leptons have a very, very bad efficiency at that time, so we only look for these two. And for two lepton case, we only look for the same sign, because the, uh, this, this can change uh, the chance to uh, the same charge of W decay to lepton neutrino, and then we produce a very unique signature, same sign, that lepton channel. In this case, uh, we can suppress back on further. Uh, so uh, then this means we can uh, really line up the sensitivity in such variable like the number of jets. So signal should have a higher jet multiplicity, so number of jets is going to high. So you see the, the open kilogram, which is the same expected signal at the right hand side. And also this is a uh, this two same size diagram channel, as yes, this trilong channel, you see more jets supposed to be. And the uh, this is what we call ST, basically the same as the, the, the variable HT we just saw, it's basically the sum of everything in the event. So basically B prime signal is produced by a heavy object, so they have a higher energy. So in any case, they will push the uh, ST distribution to be right hand, to the right hand side, and you see, yeah, and that <coughs> they look like this. And uh, the, the, sh the shared is of the one on the back one, mostly like the top, or top plus a bosom. And uh, unfortunately, the data just look like the top. It looks like uh, mm -hmm. there's a mismatch between data and simulation on the left side of your dash line. In this one? In the lower two parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was some, some mis- But here we did not really scale up. In principle, actually, the, we have to scale up the, uh, the, mon uh, the monitor to really match the data to do so-called what we call data-driven way because the, the fake rate here is very hard to estimate. So in principle, this should be uh, boost by factor two or something, in most of the case. So literally, you can resolve this slightly, but not fully. Okay. So uh, basically, we don't see uh, SS. So from data, we see two, 12 events in the sensor diagram channel, one, uh, one event in the trilepton channel. So we have uh, this so-called monitor driven based calculation, and uh, you see this so-called data driven estimation is almost a factor two of this monitor driven. So this means the hierogram should be put by a factor two. And the, this one is uh, somewhat data, if we add up this uh, data driven version plus other big one which cannot be really done by uh, uh, data driven, and you add up everything, you get the, uh, the total big one which is similar to data. And based on this, we can set a really strong limit, like uh, 611 GeV, and we have a paper published in Zetat. 
And the, this is a, a similar one. Since this guy can also decay to one, only one lepton channel, but this will become rather complicated because there will be uh, like <coughs> eight jets. So uh, one can have uh, like uh, one lepton plus eight jets. So, uh, but this one should have a good sensitivity because the efficiency is much higher than the previous version. <coughs> so uh, one can have a rather tactical, like one lepton plus uh, four jets, and the strong means EP and the decaying. And all these things put together and uh, make a fit. So uh, the analysis is done, was done in this way. Uh, one can line up how many jets uh, um, depends by carrier by how many jets they have. And the signal should have a more, uh, will have become stronger when number of jets become higher, like uh, even greater than seven jets. So you can see a uh, uh, signal look at least, and the, in the, in the low, low number of jets category, they don't see a strong signal. Uh, mostly something like big one. So the more signal like, the more big one like in that way. So by lining up everything in a one dimensional heterogram, we can make a fit. So this one will give us a very good limit, like uh, even like a 675 GeV, but using only 7 TeV data. So that's what we saw. But and uh, in the new new data, uh, people have done a, a renewed analysis of this this kind of version in this way. They start to include uh, the so-called boosted objects tagging because in this case the, the, the W decay to two, two jets can be merged into one, so they can become a powerful tool or two separate background from a single uh, single from background, and the the category defines into muons like uh, for example this muon plus one boosted the B means boosted the W, or that boosted C can be also can be done in this case so like one B one boosted B two two boosted vector boson. So based on four ATV data, unfortunately we don't push the limit too much. It's only like 732 GeV, but it's still pretty nice. It's already uh, sent to, uh, become a public result. I think it just just become public uh, two months ago. I'm curious about if we consider MW over MD prime, mm -hmm. or the other way, MD prime over MW. Mm -hmm. What is the ratio that will make it the W a boosted object? Uh, well, in our case, this really depends on the cone, right? It's currently, we, if we are using 0.5 cone, it will become merged like on, until like uh, 400 GeV PT mm -hmm. of the object. So that means uh, if, the object, if the quark is above 800 GeV, they become more, more, more and more boosted. So it's about a factor of 10? Uh, roughly, yes. Mm -hmm. So what's the paper that that is? Uh, it just submitted, I think. Okay, I oh, submitted. And it's a pass, so it's, it's, not, a pass. it's not listed as... Yeah, yeah. because I, I'm, I'm not involved in this analysis at all, so this is something I don't really know. This is a new one. And the... Uh, since we done, we have this uh, lepton plus jet upgrade, so one can also do this multi-lepton upgrade. Means uh, you look for three leptons or even four leptons with more, much more data. This, the, the previous version was done with only five inverse band of one to get for 70 EV. So one can do such cleaning and this with three leptons or four leptons at the uh, four eight EV data, which is the factor, factor four bigger than the previous version. So in this case, one can take like uh, this one B plus three lepton channel and uh, basically almost no events left over. So by just like counting this, when you get a very strong limit, almost reach 800 GV, 785 GV already. This is also a new analysis. Basically, this is a re optimized from the, the, the SUSI one, SUSI version of a multi lepton analysis. They do not just reinterpret their data, but they also re optimize the whole all the cut to match this one. So this is also Rutgers? Uh, yes, this is Rutgers <laughs> version. <laughs> yes. they, they, are, they are getting re <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They, they finally make a re optimize before they just refit their data. Now they quote unquote re optimize and push the limit by another 50 GeV or something. So let me, let me finally go to this one. This is, uh, it's not really finally, but just like for all the fourth generation, this is one of the ultimate way to go by including D prime and T prime together in some sense. So, but purely there are too many parameters to do. So in this such analysis, one has to do some assumption. One is that the, uh, they assume a nearly degenerated 4G, means uh, the two mass are roughly the same. And this means they take out the B, B prime, T prime transition to each other. And they have to simplify the uh, CK matrix. So they're just using one parameter to take over 
<coughs> this uh, the the Dyson turn and then you you take uh, everything like this. So this means that in such a model, one can produce uh, all these kind of combinations, and those combinations will anyway enhance the signal and give us stronger uh, sensitivity to, to to those new quarks. So the analysis is uh, is really complicated actually. So I don't go to the detail, but just want to say that actually cut the events into many different categories, including number of leptons, different flavor, uh, different hadronic W, or different jets, different beta in. So it's really a complicated version. So just, you can see a big line up over everything. So in the end, it make a big fit to everything together. <coughs> then it can set a limit, uh, not just on the mass, but also on the, on this, uh, the, the parameter A which is the, uh, basically BT, BT bond B squared, uh, T, T, BT B squared, BT bond B prime squared. And it, uh, you can set in this way. So the, for the best version, best limit should come from uh, A almost equal to one, which is here. So they give us, uh, <coughs> that, what, <coughs> so like a limit, it's like a 685 GB if, if, if you take this point. And the, such an analysis sense include two quarks together. So one can also assume if these two quarks are not really degenerate, so by including a uh, level smart, uh, minor mass difference between them. So in this case, uh, you see uh, the, the limit actually vary a little bit by, uh, 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 by taking all this uh, de degenerate assumption, and you see uh, the limit actually vary by roughly like uh, 20 GeV level. <coughs> So this is why so called what we call inclusive search. So in the end, we can well before we go to the further further searches, we put all, all the searches together in, in one slide, which is the, the all the limit from a different search from what we done for this uh, charge current decays like we do the W. So uh, basically, we can claim that the uh, uh, all these are very strong limit and then they are beyond the so called retarity bond. So uh, the Yukon probably can be very strong. And the, but however, one can still look for neutral, uh, neutral current decay, so like into a Z or via Higgs in the final study, which can be uh, expected to be large for effects like quarks. So let me address my part. So the idea is like this. Instead of just looking through the charge current decay, like uh, T prime to uh, DW or something, or TW, uh, one can still look <coughs> for uh, adding a, a Higgs in the final state or a Z in the final study. But sure, if the, the quark still goes through the charge current decay, it's not really different, different from the uh, previous version of the search. But if we're adding these two, you get become a very rich uh, a signature, like uh, 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 can, can produce uh, even a Higgs and a Z, and that produce more leptons or more big quark, which can be interesting. And uh, surely, one can still consider like a very exotic version. They can, this totally depends on the model we assume. This is a uh, uh, this part we actually we did the first this type of search uh, at the first one, and the, this is uh, what we look for T prime equal to T and Z. So they will give us a very interesting signature like a WZ WZ plus two big jets. So uh, the analysis can be singly done by taking clean Z to that lepton plus another lepton plus two jets. In this case, we we have this like a uh, space signal also have more jets. And we define a very special variable we call RT. This is a so-called residual ST because we subtract the uh, contribution from top. And uh, so top background should concentrate to the, the first two things, and the signal should go to high. And this one gives a very good sensitivity with a negative cut. <coughs> so this sense, this is the first analysis. So it's done with only one inverse band along data at 70 GB, a very quick one. And we get already a very good element, 475 GB. Basically, we don't see a strong assets. Also, data is slightly above the background prediction. <coughs> and after we did this, a lot of people started to jump into the field. Uh, for example, the, the, the people who work on the lepton project analysis, they, they access to, to give them the signal monitor we generated, and then they make a fit. So they can also produce a very nice uh, limit just based on the, the exact same analysis, but just replace a different model. So, in the case, get a, a, a strong limit of a T prime decay uh, is greater than 625 GeV, but using exactly same analysis, just a different, slightly different model compared to what we like, did for B, uh, uh, B prime to TW.
and the surely all everybody will do exactly the same thing Pilot did. So the people who work on inclusive search for, for T prime B prime, they can modify the analysis to, to look for inclusive zero for T prime as well. And the T prime can decay to different mixture like a T prime to BW, T T and T Higgs mixture. So uh, so idea is basically the same, looking for multi-lepton channel, like look for two lepton plus multi-jets, same size lepton, char lepton, and uh, also can look for uh, like a uh, lepton plus jets combination. And this time they include a uh, uh, BDT analysis. They put everything, try to push the BDT uh, signal to be on the right hand side, which have a stronger signal, and the left hand side to have a big one. But you see the uh, this channel is pretty dirty. Because the, the signal is fairly easy here, unfortunately the projection does not help too much this uh, signal distribution, but times 100. So it's, the real signal should be tiny. And this is just a comparison with the exact same plot for, for muon channel with 3 jet, muon channel with 4 jet, but the, uh, this uh, everything, but this is only low B tagging rate at area. So you see uh, the non, uh, so called other big one, uh, the big one other than the top are uh, increased. So we will to put together either this is a benchmark version, assuming uh, T prime decay to BW with a 50% plus another two five two twenty five percent twenty five percent to T Higgs and T T can say a limit almost like a hey, hundred GeV already. But in other sense, uh, one can uh, derive the limit on, on this kind of triangle plan. You will see this kind of triangle for many times in the further further studies. Uh, for example, one can using a different brain refraction decay to T prime decay to BW or T Higgs or T Z, and one can derive a different limit. So basically, the limit is up between uh, 370 up to 780. So that's like a 200 GeV uh, level, but this depends on the uh, <coughs> on the brain refraction or everything. This is already uh, published uh, to PLB. It's a pretty new one, but uh, it's a bit pretty quick. And this is also done by our group. Uh, we look for a slightly different. This is a B prime decay to B plus a Higgs, or a Z. So this uh, Z and the B can be uh, like a bump. Uh, basically, uh, Z is well measured, decay to two lepton, and the B, momentum of B quark is also pretty well measured. So in this case, uh, we can just simply look for this kind of final state, and they should form a bump like this. This is a signal. If, uh, if we have a signal, they should see a bump this low scale. So in a real, in real uh, I mean, linear scale, you see a very nice big shape. But sure, in low scale, it becomes more wider. But, but this is the only way to see the, the smaller signal part if uh, mass goes too high. So this is what we see from data. Uh, unfortunately, the data actually looks pretty similar to what we expected for the background, which is just like a falling 49 on the low scale, which is basically an exponential decay, like turn and turn and they, we don't see a bump. So you put together, one can set a limit on uh, like this. If uh, assuming uh, B prime decay to BZ 100%, we can have a limit uh, at exactly 700 GeV. But surely, since we only look for one side, it means uh, B prime decay to B and Z, so uh, we can also calculate the limit uh, as a function of a BZ brain refraction and the, and the uh, mass of B prime. So it becomes something like a two-dimensional limit curve. But to this, you need some assumption for the coupling, right? Uh, that's true, but the but here we only change the uh, decay. We didn't change the production. The production, anyway, is still glue-glue fusion to uh, to two park. And the decay is, we only take a brand new fashion. But this is flavor changing, so yeah. therefore, your coupling uh, is not well known. It's not well known, so we only assume either BZ or either TW. I mean, this one we haven't considered Higgs yet. Or they can, one should probably also consider gamma, right? So all the possible combinations. Yeah, I think the, the from all sides that they try to do things as model independent as possible, although it still depends on something, but it's probably the best we can do. Yeah, this is uh, another, well, you already see a similar plot, actually. This is done by, again, done by our largest people. They look for three lepton and four lepton. Since this is BZ, so BZ will again anyway decay to four leptons in the final state. So they can also do a very nice limit just based on this. So they can also look for three lepton in the case of one, one lepton did not really detect. So they can set a limit on this, and, and, and they did a, a global mixture study like a BZ, B Higgs, and a TW. So they have a limit in this uh, 
triangle area, and the mass is like a limit of 500 to 800 GeV in this kind of area. Then, uh, before I let me before closing uh, everything, I want to talk about something more exotic. I mean, more exotic quark. We can also look for. Basically, the idea is similar. This is one one kind of a uh, exotic. Tub is a top partner, but with a somewhat different charge. It's a five third in, instead of a, in a classical version. So this also get to T and a W, but instead of what we call B prime before, here is called T five third. And the, in this case, it's somewhat different because they can also take a sensor dilaton, but the sensor dilaton are all coming from a same quark. Like you see here, they are all coming from a same T five third, and then the other side. Actually, it's full hydronic, so they can actually come from mass. This is slightly different from what we did for the uh, B prime decay, which cannot basically uh, send a dilaton case, uh, one lepton uh, coming from one top, but in this case, they can actually have a nice mass. Does it have spin one half or spin two half? Uh, I think it's still uh, spin one half. I still assume this model. Otherwise, they will change the uh, production rate. Yeah. So this is the analysis. Uh, again, take a sensor and dilaton, and uh, look for the, uh, this basically the idea is all similar. Try to take the signal, and uh, look, look for high energy port, like uh, for example, like we come from the software we call HT or ST, basically summing up all the energy in the event, and then make a cut, and then look for the signal. So this is similar. So this is what they did. The good thing is that now they have a mass. Instead of we just look for a, a broader distribution, they have a mass distribution, which is taken here. And the, uh, they can, they, since the signal is so clean, so they just count how many events they have. So they can set a limit on like uh, 770 GeV. <coughs> and the, this is another one, but it's basically done by our group as well. Uh, this is somewhat different, this is a different spin. Yeah, instead of a spin, we have three, three and three half. So this one will have a higher production rate. And the, the decay will you know, assume the decay to be like a T star, which is like a, a exactly top. If a, they, can, they can happen if a top is not really an elementary, so one can look for this. And the top decay to a nominal top plus a gluon. So in this case, we have additional jets. And the, the whole analysis is done by, uh, uh, done by one lepton plus multi jet. So, and the, again, here we can reuse what we did for the T prime decay to like a top reconstruction. We can assume, uh, we can, we can, since there's only one neutrino. So the left on neutrino can become a W, and the another two light quark become a W, and uh, we have two top mass, and these two mass, total T star mass can be the same. So we can reconstruct a mass as well. So the search was done in this way by looking at the following spectrum of the data and to see if we see any, any peaking shape. Uh, again, this is low scale, so the real peak is pretty nice, I mean, pretty narrow. So we should see a bump, but it, we don't see it. So we can set a limit, which is like almost 800 GeV already, 794. And the peop, uh, some of our colleagues also repeat the analysis to work on the electron channel. But anyway, I don't go to the detail, but this can be done as well. Yeah, actually, I think I put too many different analyses, so let me quickly summarize all the people have done up to now. So everything here is here. So all the limits are between like 500 to 800 GB. So you see, barely uh, we have a cap of 800 GB based on the current data. So let me summarize. So uh, I would say searching for a new quark is almost like a must on topic at LGC. And the, it's a simple extension, and uh, they solve some big issue. And we know they are not compatible with the pure standard model. Higgs. And the, uh, what we are doing now is that we either ex extend the search to different things or look for whatever we can see. But so far, no real sig signal access, and the, the limit is like 800 GB. So uh, there's a few words to come, and there are more to co are coming. There are a few more new types of search are still planned. And the, if we want to look something super heavy, like yeah, 800 GB, we probably need for wait for certain TV run. So let's hope we are just like a, a little bit away from the discovery. Let me put a little movie here and to end my talk today. Thank you very much.
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let me hope we just need to open the door, not, not just. Mass Crusade, the Holy <laughs> Grail. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, further question. Yes. So is it a trend in part for the post-generation became the second or first Actually, a lot of analysis done today um, do not really including detailing. So in this case, uh, some of the analysis actually can extrapolate to, to second generation. Basically, they are the, con the construction is basically the same. So, but not every, not all of them. But this is indeed true. Probably one have to do a dedicated search if there is no B inside. Yeah. But in any case, you see the data do agree with the background model. So anyway, we don't see a single node. Also, we don't know <coughs> a limit as well. Shalom has left, otherwise we would like to hear his comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, but if Shalom is on here, let me ask a question that he might have. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what is your view after doing this for several years when people tell you that the generation is dead anyhow? <sighs> depressing. Very depressing, I would say. Very depressing. And the, but the prop, the issue is just like, uh, I'll say, but I'm pretty sure everybody have the same feeling because they, nobody found anything else other than Higgs, right? So the issue is that the, I think the general issue is that we don't see any evidence that data is agree on the, mo the model we have by now in, in any angle. Well, sure, there are a lot of fluctuations and the sound analysis do not really come out because they still see some minor quote unquote hit, but the, this probably just due to uh, fluctuation or something, we don't know. So uh, my feeling is that the, we can do it once again when data, uh, I mean new data are coming, but the, after that, I have no, absolutely no idea how to move on. If we don't see any hint, we probably need to do something else. Wow, that's a generation. Yeah, yeah, it's a, basically it's a general, everything. <laughs> it's not just the fourth generation, but it could be Susie, whatever everybody played for. I think this is basically it's the same issue. Or you want to say more like a, only well, unfortunate issue. Yeah. Whatever other people say, seeing is believing. You have to do the direct test. Exactly. Yeah. No matter what. Yeah. Have to, have to finish the search, right? We're up to here, and mm -hmm. uh, maybe just like one more door to open. But if next door we still see nothing, this means we have almost no chance because we cannot dig a bigger hole anyway. <laughs> not, at least not in couple of years. Okay, any further questions? So if not, let's thank uh, Professor Chen for all the effort, including today's.